Hello YouTube. So I've been out with the Sky Cannon, which is an 11 inch Schmidt Casa Grain. That's, uh, oh God, what's, um, 270 millimeters, something like that. Um, and, uh, obviously from a place with lots of light pollution. And the, the goal of this is I want to record as much of a rotation of Jupiter as I can. Obviously, you're limited by things. If clouds come over, that's going to create a break in the time lapse and all that sort of thing. Uh, so you've got to have a continuous period of clear sky. It's got to be a still sky. And that's actually quite a lot. That's quite a large ask. Um, so a lot of this is a huge roll of the dice. There's another thing that it takes a little while to sort of work out the settings. So let's take a look at what the time lapse of that night looked like. And I'm just going to leave it playing on a loop for a little bit because there's a lot that's interesting here. In fact, it's a shame that obviously these are the moons of Jupiter. There are four big moons of Jupiter. And you've got to be a bit careful here. And that some of this is just a jump in the video. This is when the clouds come over. And so you'll notice the moons jump from here to here so this moon um does actually legitimately vanish <laughs> behind jupiter but the other one you'll notice you can see easily comes across and then even more cool is yeah i can see there's the elongated shadow on the moon and also about this time we're burning out this is what i mean it's actually really fiddly so you can do hours of processing and Okay, it didn't quite go in the bin. It still, if you just play the video, yeah, it, it, it looks okay. You know, I've not put a great deal of effort into centering everything up, but it, it, it's not bad. But anyway, so it's about here is the the super interesting bit because first of all, you'll notice that the moon comes across and the shadow later. And of course, this is because the sun is somewhere over here. Um, and it all sort of depends on what time of year you got. So here we are on Celestia. This is basically what we look like at the moment. Moment: The sun is here. Jupiter is here. Everything goes counterclockwise. So Jupiter's actually heading this way. The Earth is heading this way. So he's past opposition is Jupiter at the moment. Uh, you know, once per year, Jupiter is basically due south at midnight. And this does mean that you get the interesting phenomena that uh, a moon coming counterclockwise, uh, yeah, coming counterclockwise, means that uh, as viewed from Earth, the moon appears across the disk of Jupiter before it actually gets to the point where the sun and the moon and Jupiter are all in the line together. So if we actually zoom all the way into Jupiter, this is actually set up for about what it was like on that day. Um, you've got to also bear in mind that uh, with telescopes, things will quite often, things in telescopes are always upside down and back to front. You put mirrors in there and uh, left becomes right and, and so forth. So it's, it's, a, it's a little confusing, but this is basically what you had on that night is that Io, which is the moon that we're actually looking at there, uh, Earth is down here. So at the moment, Io is now moving across the disk of Jupiter. In fact, we, can we zoom out and see that? Yeah, so this is roughly what you would have seen from Earth, is Io is across the disk of Jupiter, but no shadow yet. And you have to wait for the... For it, there we go. You have to wait for it. Uh, basically, now is what you would see if you were on the sun looking at it. Uh, but the most interesting thing is, <clears throat> if we zoom all the way into Jupiter, and let's try and sort of straighten this out a bit, is this means that from our position on Earth, actually, actually I can zoom out and show you in, in detail. Uh, let's back time up a little to about now. So what we see on Earth is something like this. And if we put time forward again, so you see the moon moves across first and then the shadow starts later. But the interesting thing is, and you can actually see this, 
is when the shadow first starts, you get a fantastic elongated shadow on the side of Jupiter that very rapidly becomes a much more spherical thing. But it's only when you're, yeah, if you're looking at it from the point of view of the sun, then they're always circular shadows. However, if you're slightly off to the side, like this, and <clears throat> then you see that when the eclipse starts, back, you actually get this wonderful elongated shadow on the side. And that's basically what you're looking at there. So if we zoom all the way in, you see that the moon comes across first. And at some later point, you see the elongated shadow, uh, which then very rapidly becomes circular. And that's where it goes behind the house. And that really sucked because, <clears throat> well, on two reasons, for, for, for two grounds. First of all, I, I got this big gap in the video here. Um, you know, so if you take a look at this moon, you'll see it jumps all the way from there to there. Um, but not deterred, I get out there the next night and do the same. But now I'm getting the time lapse camera in a better position, as you see. I mean, my dressing gown, because they're not terribly cold nights. You'll see also uh, all sorts of planes coming into the There's a flight path over here somewhere. So you'll see stuff happening there. This is Saturn, by the way. And you'll notice the tracking on the telescope is not so good tonight. It's not level or something. I don't know. Um, and so it it keeps drifting. So I keep having to recenter it to to get the video to go to go properly. Um, but anyway, from all of that captured video, again I get on to the processing side of things. And on this night, I actually have two different cameras. And you can see where I changed the cameras again. So this is the Southern Equatorial Band now. So there's a bit of a jump here um, when I change the cameras. But uh, so this is the old camera, and then I switch to the uh, the more modern one, which is a Zwo camera, which yeah actually produces better video. Um, <clears throat> and of course you've got a moon there also at the same time. There's also some kind of nice stuff with the, the the great red spot here. So you see there's this you know just off to the side of the great red spot there's some some interesting weather there and then in the tail end of the great red spot there's a discontinuity in that that band there the southern equatorial band anyway so on the third night i'm getting much better at this now and so the the time lapse camera is in a much better position the weather was much better tonight so here you've got jupiter uh, you'll notice much more the plane flight path over here as well there's you know quite a lot of planes that come and go here and also you'll notice that the tracking on the telescope tonight is much much better so this was also the night that i did the the live cast if you're wondering and the seeing was stable and steady the whole night as you yeah, the clouds you see everything is kind of got a certain calm going to it and the whole night you know one sensor and you'll also see about now when it starts to go behind the building and it starts to fade away. So you see right at the end there that as it goes behind the building, uh, the, the image just gets fainter and fainter as it goes behind the building. Uh, at which point, yeah, um, I just pack up for the night. But, okay, so what did that look like? And that's not it. So, yeah, all these are manually centered up, right? So there's a lot of fiddly work that goes on here. But um, this night, of course, I had sort of worked out a lot more of the settings. And so it looks like this. So you get lots of moon movement here. But there's something even cooler that you get. Yeah, let's see if you can see it. Right? So there are three minutes between frames here. Right? Every one of these frames is three minutes apart. But the thing that's really cool is you get the opposite thing that you had with... There's a rogue frame in here somewhere. I think it's at the beginning. 
But there's the rogue frame. You get out of here. Good. Okay, let's try it again. <clears throat> so each one of these is an individually processed frame. But what's really cool, um, again, it's a bit of a shame. Uh, the, the conditions have obviously gotten much better. And yeah, I've, I've inverted this one uh, correctly. So this is the Southern Equatorial Band, but oddly enough, the planet is rotating the, odd, the, the wrong way around. This needs to be looked at in a mirror for it to be correct. But, and so this is the the bit that we were looking at, the weird bit on the, the other side of the Great Red Spot. There, there are subsequent days um, that you're looking at here on Jupiter. So this is how much uh, the weather can change in a day is what you'd be looking at. But the bit that I really want to draw your attention to is you'll notice here we have two moons. Okay, two moons, two moons, two moons. Three moons, and you even get to see them emerge from eclipse. So just like with the previous one, um, like I was saying, you I, I've not sorted all the orientation on the images out yet, but on the previous one, uh, the moon would have come across from this side, and you'd have seen the moon go across the face, and then the shadow follow afterwards. Well, likewise, on this side, you've got a moon that's actually being eclipsed by the big boy, being eclipsed by Jupiter, and this is him emerging from the shadow. So he's actually emerging from the shadow, and I wish I'd done that on, I well, just run continuous video, because that, well, they're three, three minutes between frames, so it's, it, uh, there is nothing here. So this is three minutes later, three minutes later, three minutes later. So it takes about 10 minutes for the, the planet to emerge from Jupiter's shadow like that. Um, anyway, so these were three subsequent days of uh, videoing Jupiter. And obviously with this one, there were no clouds, no breaks in the video or anything. So you get to see the sort of differential speeds of the moons uh, and they're rotating in their different orbits. So this one's obviously the furthest one out. This one is Callisto. Uh, and then uh, this looks like Europa. This one's moving the fastest, so he's presumably Io. Uh, so my guess would be Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Um, <clears throat> Because if we come back to Jupiter, uh, which is this one, <clears throat> and yeah, we move him back. Uh, the four big moons are, unfortunately, it puts gazillions of them on. But yeah, so you got Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. And if we actually sort of play this at a sensible speed, <clears throat> You'll see that Io goes around. Ah, oh God, these are on three to two resonances. I think they're all three to two resonances. So for every two times Io goes around, they always sync up at this point, right? So Io goes around once, and on the next revolution, they sync up again, and it's the same orbital resonances between Europa and Ganymede and Ganymede and Callisto. If I remember rightly, it's been a long time since I looked at these, <coughs> but. Um, so well, just to give you a sample of what we were looking at, uh, yeah, we would be looking at it from uh, the other way, I think. So we would be looking at, I oh, know that no, this is, this is right. So you look at Europa. Hey, why didn't Europa vanish? Backwards. So Europa must vanish. It has. It's just... Oh, that's annoying. So what you're saying is... I have to zoom all the way in. Okay. I think I can do this center and let's zoom all the way into Europa <clears throat> and tracking and now 
as we move up the right. There we go. That's him going into Eclipse. So let's go backwards again. There we go. Forwards. And... Oops. That's him going into Eclipse. And if I'm good, I should be able to zoom all the way out. So this is kind of what we were looking at. That, uh, yeah, you were looking at Europa. And as it comes off uh, one side of the planet, it's still in the shadow of Jupiter. <clears throat> so you would be looking at something like he goes into the shadow. And from Earth, you don't see him until he's way off the limb here when Europa emerges from the the shadow of Jupiter. Anyway, so uh, if I'm sort of torn, uh, ideally I would like to get a, a beautiful whole series on Jupiter, but the thing is you've got to you've got to get lucky. You've got to get the seeing a big telescope <clears throat> like the sky cannon is useless on well if it's cloudy it's as useless as any other telescope um but you need the skies to be especially clear to take advantage of it uh, your usual limiting factor on all of these things is the sky um so if i get really lucky what i would want is something more like this where you get to see really cool stuff. Uh, if we had really clear skies and this was right in the middle of my run and not right at the end of it, then this would be awesome. But you can also see, you know, when this when the scene goes to 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 crap, you'll get frames where yeah, this is like when there are light clouds going over or the atmosphere is not stable. It it just completely trashes your ability to see things with the telescope. And it can be super random. So, is that, yeah, I mean, you see that the seeing is degraded here. And it never really comes back again. So this is an extended period of poor seeing. But before then, it's actually pretty decent. All right, this is probably as good as it's ever been. And, you know, from as good as it's ever been to being bad. And it, it just depends, you know, if there's warm air coming off the city or something, then then that's it. You're you're screwed. Um, <clears throat> and there's a hell of a commitment to doing it because, yeah, um, you have to sit there for for lots of hours. But, it, yeah, I mean, if, if I, I really want to be able to pull this one off to actually... I mean, it's kind of nice. I've got one emerging from transit. And he's super nice. So the next time, yeah, I, I might just continuously video that. Uh, you wouldn't have seen any of this on the raw footage, by the way, because you only start, the, the moons, you can just about see them on the raw footage. It's only when you do this sort of stacking thing with Reggie stacks that the moons become very, very clear. Anyway, so, yeah, that's um, some fun that I've been doing with Jupiter. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And, uh, yeah, I might make this into a more groomed video for certain if I can get that one, the the, the, the money shot of, of Jupiter. So when I did this 10 years ago out, out in the desert, um, then... Yeah, you know, I, I had some periods of clear seeing, but I, I also got this perfect transit of IO, which was, was awesome. Anyway, so um hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.